Hello, BitBiters. Welcome back to Puppy Fractics Retro Recipes. Well, you know, when we fix up old computers, uh, you sometimes hear me say that I think they deserve our love and care in return for all the happiness they gave us as kids. Oh, come back. When we're feeling nostalgic, we might even wonder what was it like to actually be on the other side of the mirror, uh, actually programming those games that we grew up loving. All right, Bill. He's going at proper speed. That's the policeman. Well, what if I told you that today we could peer through that looking glass back into the past and actually sit in the seat of one of the original designers of one of the longest running game franchises in the world? Well, thanks to an incredible donation, that's exactly what we're going to do today. There's only one way to describe it. Guys, I've got worms. Yeah, you should leave. Welcome. So in this series of about three or four videos sprinkled through our usual content, we'll be exploring this Team 17 treasure trove that we received. And in this video, in a few minutes, we'll be trying to explore the actual hard disks of that Team 17 developer, Amiga. Now, until now, the closest that I got to having the real worms running on my computer was the one I found in my 2E disk drive. I know worms like apples, but that's ridiculous. But if you haven't heard of Team 17 and the Worms games, let me take you on a quick trip down Wormery Lane. But for that, I'll need to grab some copies of the games first. Aha! Uh -huh. Excuse me. What? Do you have Worms? No, you have Worms. No, no, the, the game. I've got game. You got game? No, uh, the game Worms? You have fish and game Worms. Fish what? Fish and game Worms. So you do have worms. I have worms. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. And you know, Worms was actually the 13th game that Team 17 released, lucky for some, and it said the game saved the studio from closure. For it, they teamed up with a small distributor called Ocean Software, who expected to ship about 60,000 copies of the game, and instead they sold millions in the first year alone. Even Mrs. Perifractic has played the games. What's this? Yes, she has worms now too. Well, the game's success led to over 20 sequels to the game on every platform you could imagine, and surely helped Team 17 recently celebrate their 100th game release. Congratulations. <coughs> Did you know there was even a version of worms for Teletext? Sadly, according to the Team 17 website, all the code was lost in 1998 when a junior programmer spilled dandelion and burdock over his Amiga 4000. But luckily for Retro Recipes, because some test transmissions were made during episodes of Channel 4's Pork Pie, yum yum. If we happen to have that show on VHS, by just playing it back, we could actually play back the teletext code that was transmitted with it, revealing this glorious 3-bit pixel fest. What if that A4000 hadn't been frazzed? Better still, what if an original Team 17 Amiga 4000 from 1995? And say, 10 hard disks, assorted floppies, backup tapes, and much, much more had survived, been exported with one of the designers to California, rediscovered 20 years later in his shed, put out with the trash on pickup day, and then saved with a last minute email because he was moving to Kenya and wanted to find them a good home. Well, meet Chris Blythe. He's the one on the right. He's now an Emmy-nominated director of commercials, TV, and documentaries, 
as well as a 3D animator, editor, and visual effects director. But back in the 90s, his childhood love of computers and a fun story helped him score a job at the then upcoming Team 17 software in Wakefield, UK. More about that in a future episode called A Day in the Life of a Worms Developer. <clears throat> well, with his permission, in that episode, we're going to go through his 1997 day planner. You won't want to miss that. Oh, and in case you were wondering, Team 17 got their name from the merger of 17-bit software and Swedish developer Team 7. Well, at Team 7, Team, uh, his primary work was designing the then groundbreaking FMV sequences in Worms 1 and 2. And as we all know, FMV stands for Printed Circuit uh, Full Motion Video. So sit back and enjoy just some of those wonderful sequences from the original Amiga games. Due to the size of Chris's worm, worms, treasure trove, <laughs> uh, I made the trip to Chris's place so he could give me worms, give me the worms stuff. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> uh, it was there that he casually wormed into conversation the fact that, even more impressively, he was even the voice of many of the original worms. For the sound effects, that went down to Bjorn and he did it in Cakewalk. Oh, nice. But and we recorded the voices down in his little studio too. So and you, you did a lot of the voices, or some of the voices. Yeah, I did, did Soul Man, and I did uh, Angry Scots. Can you I give us a rendition now? Man, <laughs> I have to think about it for a minute. Okay. There was that one. There was I'm a bone out of my head, which is when it's pitched up was slightly different. I'm a bone out of my head. And then, yeah, we dancer. Yeah, we dancer. And there was other ones like I'm gonna mollicate you. I'm gonna mollicate you. And uh, the losers are total losers. The losers are total losers. <laughs> and then and a lot of the... Uh, 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 all of those. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, oh. yeah, beauty. Revenge. That was me, because I'm good at groaning. <laughs> this, one, oh, this is the, the one where he smacks him with the uh, oh, yeah. baseball bat. For no reason. Apart from the fact that it's funny. Yeah, it so, is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Now, my first instinct seeing the items was what a great refurb they'd make, especially that Team 17 Amiga 4000 with its years of sweat and tears and a smashed zero key. Uh, more about the story of how that happened in that future video. And speaking of future videos, you'll notice there are two Amiga 4000s here. Yep, the other came from Digital Domain and was used on the set of Apollo 13 and some other little movie. Stay tuned for us to explore those hard disks. But back to refurbs, and usually we'd scrub every part of it, recap the board, fix the key. But you know, I quickly realized this one's different. I don't think this is just dirt. They're like any collectible that belongs in a museum, Perhaps this is just its patina. That belongs in a museum! That keyboard grime is Worms Design sweat left on the keys. The dust in the power supply fan contains, you know, the very DNA of Team 17's Wakefield office circa 1995. The dirt on the mouse ball comes from the tears of a thousand tiny worms who auditioned for the game but didn't make it. <laughs> Ultimately, I decided wherever this machine ends up, maybe even with you, it will be up to the new owner whether or not to permanently remove that patina. We'll be leaving them as is. Except, of course, I made sure that the Vata battery, destroyer of worlds, had been removed. And then it was time to drive them back to the Retro Recipes kitchen. Ooh, nice, yeah. Oops. I'm fine. A 
Okay, well, that, that's not actually me driving home. Uh, this is the brand new Beach Buggy Racing 2 on Tesla. It's a really great way to just unwind. Oh, come on. Uh, well, yeah, anyway, uh, if you're thinking of getting a Tesla or even their solar panels, you can use this coupon code for up to a thousand miles of free supercharging. But to actually transport the worm stuff, they used a much more old fashioned method. But now we've got the machines in the Retro Recipes kitchen, the first thing we must do is back up the hard disks. There are three ways we could do this. We could boot the Amiga, install a backup drive, and then just clone it that way. But this is really risky with a computer that hasn't been powered on for decades. It could just be waiting to fry the hard disk and well, nobody likes fried worms. <laughs> the second way is we could take the drives out and use a USB to IDE adapter with a modern computer. But the Amiga, of course, used a proprietary file system, so actually Windows and Mac won't be able to see the full drive in order to clone it. Thirdly, we could run an Amiga emulator on a modern computer, but they don't support real Amiga hard disk cloning or USB adapters. Until recently. Yep, the worm has turned. Uh, as luck would have it, Win UAE developer Tony Wylan recently started refining experimental support for exactly that purpose. Incredible timing, really. Let's open up this Amiga and grab those hard disks. Can open worms everywhere? And this is the USB to IDE adapter. We just plug it into the hard disk there. You love worms, don't you? Let's power it up. And there you can see the other end connected to the Windows PC. And WinUAE has recognized the drive. So we click Create Hard Disk Image File, and off it goes. So let's fast forward a little, and after literally weeks of trying, and that's not a joke, and troubleshooting with Tony, and even kind donations, like a matching hard drive PCB for me to swap thanks to the kind support of Chris Collins, we're finally able to get the most of the drives spinning and perform backups to WinUAE on a Windows laptop. Speaking of PCBs and backups, did you know that PCB Way just celebrated their fifth anniversary? They have all sorts of deals on offer to celebrate. Because as we all know, PCB Way stands for Perifractics Computer Backed Up Worms Armageddon, y'all. And it does. Oh, and speaking of supporters, I do want to say a really quick but yet huge thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube channel members, including Sir Julian Dowess, hi Jules, and Lord John Butler. Hey Jono. Uh, they both recently became official Perifract Team Rhodium members. Seriously though, all of your support, it just means the worm to me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I said most of the drives are working. Some, however, just won't spin up. But if you work for a professional data recovery company, feel free to reach out to me via my website, as you might just save some more worms from their metallic tombs. <laughs> Now, I'm still working out the details, but in a future video, where I'll also attempt to see what's on these backup tapes, uh, anyone got a DDS tape drive I can borrow too? I hope to be able to release the Win UAE drive backups under a free public license, so maybe you can boot up the Worms A4000 on your phone. Crazy. But for now, and with the data preserved, it was time to reinstate the hard disk and try turning the machine on so we can explore the contents using the original hardware. I could really think of no better way to do that than invite Chris Blythe 
into the kitchen here to guide us through and enjoy a nice cup of worms. What's going on? What's oh, right? Oh, that's right. Look at hey, you. no kissing, you two. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hey. Mm. <laughs> All righty. Okay. This is it. Fingers crossed. The moment of truth. Let's do it. Shall we? Yep. But I feel like we should Thelma and Louise this. Or <laughs> so, so it was about 20 years ago since I've actually started this machine. Wow. Have you got like a fire? Have you got, that, you've got a fire extinguisher there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Are we it. ready? Yeah. No signal. Signal. Uh, the other drive's right. I see hard drive access. Yep. yep. It's booting. There's no picture. Ah. Wait, it has to get through the startup sequence because the Picasso card came... Hey! Yay! All right. Bam! So American. Wow. I'll put the uh, fire extinguisher away, I think. Uh, Director Opus 5. Classic. Hey! <laughs> Intel outside, starting Rex. Still wants to direct through a bus. Beautiful. Well, you can cancel those. Yeah. Wow. Intel outside. <laughs> so this is this is my this is my machine from from Team Seventeen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bars and Pipes Pro. Have you heard of that? So Bars and Pipes Pro. So you know this. I used to work for their UK technical support. Wow. This machine has been through so much. We would kill these machines. Now we had been using the LCD monitor you just saw there to try to get some more graphics modes, but actually it wasn't helping much. So we switched back to this NTSC CRT. But that says high res. Let's just try one of those. But even that was struggling on this PAL machine. Yes. Now we're getting That somewhere. is low res. That is incredibly low res. <laughs> but we finally got something that was usable in almost all graphics modes. Now we need to really look around now and see what's in there. Here's the disk partitioner thing. Now, we won't bore you with the details, but it took about another hour before we could actually get to the files that we wanted to look at. Oh, wow. Look at all this stuff. So it's seeing those two drives. Yeah. Right. That's great. Mm -hmm. But why is it... It's uh, make that two hours. It's in the startup sequence. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually the original game icon that, that somebody made that I think Andy Davidson made. Look at the way it is. I think it was scanned in on one of those hand scanners wow. and it was done in Biro or something. So nobody's ever seen that before? No, and if I if I go in here, I don't know what if I if I load this, I have no idea what's gonna happen. But we may as well try it. May as well. Bump bump. Wow! And there you have it. Oh. Shoot. Now you have to put in the protection code. Please. So is this a beta? This would be a beta, yeah. Worms picks. Big, big worms. worms. What is big worms? Big worm guns. So these we can use the viewer. Image of Image two. Effects. There you go. Postscript loader. Fine. That may be okay. It'll get through this. Pal. <laughs> see something. There are other buttons on the back. Hey, good. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, at least we can... Oh, what did you do? I just I clicked something. Well, now you're going to do that switch again. Yeah. At this point, I just want to see a worm. I know, eh? Not even worms. Just worms picks. Bandana. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> <sighs> so, damn it, we need a PAL monitor. Painful. Well, no doubt by now you're feeling our pain. And the issue was that the software preferences were pre-saved to switch into a PAL mode that this monitor just can't display. Well, this was just image FX. What we were really looking for here was the light wave worms animations. So let's see if we have more luck if we find those. New tools, what's that? Oh, FS that's okay. Why didn't you just call it stuff for retro recipes video? I know that would have been, I should have thought about that. You're Back in the right. day. Back in the day. Chris. Lightwave things. Humanoid. Yeah. Rings a bell. Team 17. Worms. Chemical. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I'm upsetting the monitor. <laughs> and that, look, there's the scenes. Ah! Can we load these into Lightwave? Yeah, All we right. can. Good God, this is incredible. <laughs> I can't believe this. Right, I say go with this guy. Yeah, let's try that. It's loaded it. That's I can see it. Yeah, no, it's it's a 
That's what he wants, pal. So I posted an urgent message on the English Amiga board and in literally five minutes got a solution from Mark K. Thanks, Mark. He suggested using a tool like Amiga to NTSC or Degrader, and I was able to download them, burn them onto a floppy, and in no time at all, well, in three hours at all, this happened. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, this happened. And there we go. Whoa, okay. There. Holy moly. We are in the very old version of Lightwave. We managed to do that config. I don't think I've ever done that thing. Does this bring back memories? Yeah, it really does. So let's go into scenes. Yeah, so we go to 3D and you go to objects. Um, and you come down to there. And this won't be anything at all. It's just a surrounding hillside. Okay, okay. There you go. Um, bars and pipes now. So we went worm hunting for some interesting files to load into Lightwave. Dagger. So it looks like there wasn't. A, yeah, look, grenade pin. Oh, a... ah, here we go then. So, worm, look, shotgun. There's all the stuff that we used. Arm bionics, ball, a, a basic worm. It's uh, it's in there. Can we just talk about this? Worm dot arse. That's definitely one of mine. Worm helmet. This is all. Here they are. Okay. This so, is it. So we know where we are. We're just inside animals, which is animals. Just dumb. Well, they worms are animals. Well, you know. Yeah. Let's. See. So if we now go inside um, modeler, so we go into objects, animals. Oh, look at that. Worms meta will be a bit. Met, that was mean it was ready for meta meta something. The smoothing thing that you typed it. Um, so if we open up that. Boom! There it is. There's the actual worm right there. <laughs> That's from Worms 1. Wow. Can we move him around or anything? We can. With with the with a bit of luck, I can rotate around. So that's rotating it. And we would work with this. This is what would work with. I know that for you, you're just kind of going back into work mode and like, this, oh, these are my files. But for me, this is just amazing to see. So there we go. So there's the actual worm. This is the DNA of the yeah. Worms license, the, the whole franchise. It yeah. started right here. Isn't that funny? Uh, but the eye, it didn't have any eyes. <laughs> so Do Worms have eyes, though? Let's well, be real. that's right. They didn't, we gave them eyes. Oh, you gave we them enhanced them. We made them better. We'd actually work on this. And to be honest, we had all sorts of trouble with the triangles and everything under the armpit, which was, which was awful. I mean, I always have trouble drawing worm armpits. Well, that's the thing is, that's why I was called in. And try terrace, try worm whoosh. This is the shotgun for the bit at the beginning of I have built this. So, the, the, you know, the bit where the, where the worm goes. Ch -ch -ch. And at the beginning of the interesting, this is the actual model. See how slow things were? So, that was its very simple model. Oh, John wow. made this one. And that, but then what you do is you text on top of it. You could put different types of things and you'd see it squash and stress and boing and go off. And that was the one that the bomb that was sn sniffing out the worm. Yeah. They came. <laughs> yeah. Again, we we did all those sounds too, you know. So would you have recorded that into a microphone, like it was on your desk, or was there uh, a studio? We had a microphone. No, we just did it in the office. Yeah. What is this? So what you're seeing is, oh, there. If <laughs> yeah. you wait for it, it will draw it. And so it, he's now shooting, and these are trees over there. So if I now scrub here, you'll be able to see him going doom, doom, shooting, and then looking up, and it's like, huh? And he looks the camera because then it starts. Okay. Eating, that, that's that's. After, that is at the end scene. After it stops shooting, all the worms have dropped out. Right. And then he looks at the camera and goes, I don't know, and then walks off the screen. So, so that is essentially his skeleton that manipulates yeah. manipulate. And then what we're seeing way. here, he lifts up his shoulders like that. So these bones control the deformation yeah. of the worm itself. Okay. And then you see him go, look, and see the eyebrows going up. And can we actually render these? Is it going to take a year? No, no. I mean, you can if we can get layout working. I'd love to just get a worm and just render I it. I know. But we can watch it drawing it. Okay. Could even do a time lapse. And one year later, uh, sorry, one minute later. So uh, here we go. And there you have it. That is a frame 
from Worms being re-rendered wow. on this Amiga 23 years later. <laughs> Isn't that bananas? Wow. It's actually way faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. You want to load another scene? Yeah. Let's load another scene. Now we know how. Now we know how. It's only flamethrower amps. Let's look. That only took us oh, five hours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see, he's, he brings up his guns. Zhoof, like that. You can see it's done it in the background. Mm. So he had guns on his back, he had guns he was pulling up, and then I animated the bullet belts kind of swinging backwards and forwards. It's like a slimy Lara Croft. That's just the one little bit of it. So cool. Well, you know, it really blew our minds that we were actually able to access the original animation files from the then groundbreaking FMV work on the very first game in what became such an iconic franchise. But we also want to be clear that the game and those animations weren't just Chris's work. He was just a small cog in the team machine. Yep, it really was a team effort and wouldn't have crawled onto our screens at all without these men and were men. But the serious question now arises of what to do with this machine and all the associated goodies. Now in future episodes, we'll go through some of this original artwork, but there's much more in this trove, including posters, E3 VIP passes, compliment slips, even some official protection for your little worm. <laughs> now I am in discussions with Team 17 about whether they might like the A4000 and more, but at the time of filming, nothing's really been decided. So I'm also putting it out to you via a simple poll. So please just click on the icon in the corner of this video or via the description. And on that poll, you can vote for what you'd like to see happen to the stuff. Because in a way, these don't really belong to our little channel at all, or maybe even to the developer. Perhaps they belong to the whole community. I don't know. I mean, after all, many of us grew up with the Worms game on Amiga. It's part of our childhoods, our teens. It's part of all of us. Yes, my friend, you have worms. Well, stay tuned for the cure, but for now, thanks for watching. Vote below and cheerio. Oh, shit. Can't remember. <laughs>